What are mirror organisms? I mean, break it down for me. So think about it this way. Imagine you're building something with Legos. Okay, I'm with you. All life on Earth. It's like using the same type of Lego connection over and over. Mm. But mirror organisms would be different. It'd be like flipping that connection around, changing how everything fits together. Okay, so like a mirror image. Yeah, exactly. It all comes down to something scientists call homocurality. It's a mouthful, I know. No worries, you're the expert. So every living thing on Earth, I mean everything, from the tiniest little bacteria to us, you and yeah. me, it's all built with these molecules, right? And they have a specific handedness. So our DNA and RNA, they use right-handed molecules, but our proteins, they use the left-handed ones. Mirror organisms would flip that whole thing. Oh, okay. So it'd be like using the same Lego bricks, but reversing all those connections. It's, well, <laughs> it creates something totally different from anything we've ever seen. It's like alien life forms. But right here on Earth, that's kind of freaky. <laughs> and in this an article you sent, it talks about how our bodies would interact or not interact, I guess, with these mirror organisms. That's one of the biggest worries, right? Our bodies are built to deal with a very specific kind of life, a certain chirality. Our immune systems, they wouldn't know how to fight these mirror organisms off. They just wouldn't compute. Exactly. It's like trying to fit the wrong key into a lock. Our immune system's keys, they just wouldn't work on the locks of mirror organisms, so they can just, you know slip right past our defenses like we weren't even there okay so no natural defenses that's already scary enough but the article also mentions this other risk uncontrolled replication like what's the worst case scenario there well imagine bacteria that our antibiotics just can't kill oh wow bacteria that our immune systems can't even see mere organisms could just replicate like crazy spread like wildfire i mean who knows right that's definitely pushing us into uh <laughs> nightmare territory but wait i I also read that this whole mirror molecule thing was originally seen as a good thing. Like, what was so appealing about it at first? Oh yeah, it had its allure, for sure. It was all about the potential for medicine. Imagine drugs that could target super specific areas in the body without being broken down by our system. Like, they'd last longer and be way more effective. It seemed revolutionary. So how do we go from medical miracle to potential apocalypse? I think it's about, well, the more we learn, the more we realize how complex life is and how messing with that can have consequences we didn't even think of. Makes sense. So unintended consequences. And this is where George Church comes in, right? Right, right. The Harvard geneticist. He was super into mere organism research at he first. He was a big proponent, yeah. And the article mentions he actually made a huge breakthrough. Oh, he did. Back in 2016, his team created a mirror version of DNA polymerase. It's like the essential enzyme for DNA replication. It was a big deal. So he was actually trying to create mirror life. Like, how close are we to actually making a mirror organism? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? I mean, figuring out how to make a mirror version of DNA polymerase. It's like figuring out how to make the bricks. But we're still a long way from building a whole house, or in this case, a whole functional mirror cell. So there's still a way to go. Hmm. But his work definitely moved things along, huh? No question. It pushed the field forward. But then, yeah, his perspective changed. The article said he's actually one of the most outspoken scientists against this research now. He's definitely had a change of heart. What made him switch sides? Well, think about it. This risk of uncontrolled replication, the fact that our bodies wouldn't know how to handle mirror organisms, those are some pretty serious red flags. I think he started realizing, hey, we need to be way more careful here. We need to be responsible with this kind of power. That makes sense. You don't just create a new life form and hope for the best. It's like that whole precautionary principle thing, right? Exactly. If something has the potential to go really wrong, maybe we should think twice before doing it. And when we're talking about creating whole new life forms, well, the potential consequences are huge. So are we saying the risk just isn't worth it, even if it could lead to amazing medical breakthroughs? That's the debate. How do you weigh the potential benefits against the risk of creating something we might not be able to control? Yeah, that's a tough one. Okay, so let's sum up. Mere organisms are basically alien life forms right here on Earth. They could be dangerous, maybe even apocalyptic. And even scientists who are excited about it are now saying, hold on, this is getting kind of scary. It's a good reminder that science can move faster than our ability to really grasp the consequences, you know? It really makes you think. What? If mere organisms actually existed, what would that mean for life as we know it? For evolution? Could they make their own ecosystems, their own interactions? And that's what I love about these deep dives, pushing the boundaries of what we know and, well, grappling with those big mind-blowing questions.